coming up next on Button to Christ Ministries. Ask God to give you the ability to have dominion in your dream. Like for my dream, I would say 90% I'm in control of my dream. And it's not a lot of people like that. So therefore, if I'm in my dream and I see a dead relative, I'm not going to go and hug them. I will say, you're dead, and I'll rebuke. If something is coming at me, God always make a way out. I will fly. So I have control in my dream, you know, so I don't know. It's, it's very powerful, but you have to pray for this also. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Divine Rescue with Patrick Baker. He's mighty and he's powerful. To God be the glory. Um, so we got some questions here from a couple of our viewers. Um, one of the viewers says, Can a Christian minister flourish and succeed in the long term if the ministry um, matrimonial home is lacking in unity? And then the question goes on to say, the person goes on to say, the couple are leading independent lives, living like co-tenants in the home. So basically, can, you know, can that, that person continue on in such a sense because husband and wife are not on the same page? Well, I'm views. really trying to get it a bit clearer mm -hmm. still, but... There's nowhere in the world that says you have to be on the same page because you're one, but if one decides to go east and one go west, like I remember the story with um, when Lot become a, Lot's wife become a pillar of salt. Mm -hmm. Lot wanted to go there and run away from the city, but his wife was wanted to go, wanted to go back within the heart. Mm -hmm. So no man knows the heart. And when it comes to God's work, you have to press with it. Mm -hmm. So the word says also, two will be in the field, and one will be, uh, will be we, we save, we taken, and the other not. So again, mm -hmm. it's all depend on the individual walk. I personally think it's the individual walk, even though when you're married, you're one. But you cannot carry the burden for somebody else. And it could be a daughter, it could be a, a son, it could be any family member. Mm -hmm. Because when you, once you come to the table and you have worship, and you worship and everything is known, this is how we grow on what we do. But you can't force anyone mm -hmm. to serve God. So from a, that point, point of view, I think once you are doing what is right in the sight of the Lord, the enemy will come in and he can try to create separation and mm -hmm. destruction. Mercy. But you cannot stop with the work of the Lord. I think this is a way of slowing down the work of the Lord. Well, when people will come with opinion and say, if the two don't agree, how can they walk? Mm -hmm. But it depends on where they're walking. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no, it Mercy. depends. Mercy. It depends. You know, they may be going this way. It depends. Mercy. And, and, and from, from, from even being around the ministry and going around, we, we get to understand people more because it's the same when, when um, um, people um, married with children and bring other children and vice versa. Like, there have to be, as you always mention in there, have to be um, a family meeting happening. And, you know, I mean, I, I myself, uh, with my family, we have started, you know, the family meeting. And, and as you suggested, you know, you, hear, you should hear some opinions these, you know, these little ones have that really blows your mind. Yeah, they say we need more food. <laughs> <or> more, <laughs> yeah. more mangoes. You better bring more. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, you know, so, you know, definitely yeah. it, it's, it's, it's good when two can pull together and go in the same direction but if one decided to say you know go south as you say and one go north then you know there's nothing you yeah, can because do. a point you can say you can have all the meetings mm -hmm. you want but it start from the heart mm -hmm. so you can have 50 meetings Mercy. and if one decide I don't want to do it that way 
I know a young person asked me a question before. What if you're obedient to your parents and they tell you to do something and you know in your head it's not right? You know what I mean? Would you do it? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's a key again. It go back to how the Lord works and, and who do you obey? Some people compromise and obey others other than God. Mm -hmm. So it's really a it's deep really, situation. Really, really a deep situation. We also have a, another viewer here that, um, that wrote, Brother Patrick, um, I've been going through a lot and some of these issues are visiting a spirit healer, generational curses, and abuse in the family. Uh, this viewer feels that when they pray, it goes nowhere but just hitting the ceiling and coming back down. Are these things listed that I just listed there a way of the enemy to use as a blocker for this person and their prayer? Well, um, it's, a, it's a tough thing. When you say you pray and your prayer ain't going anywhere, first of all, um, you have to know your relationship with God. And sometimes God will tell his people to wait. Mm -hmm. But we declare that the prayer is not going anywhere because we are impatient and we want answer now. Mm -hmm. We want to pray and see the thing move right away, but we don't even have faith. So I think you can analyze it both ways. If there's baggages and accursed things, then mm -hmm. that's definitely a blockage. But, you know, it depends. You know what I mean? There's so many different ways you can, you can look at it. Mm -hmm. Because in the time of crisis, sometimes Christ can hear you. You know what I mean? It depends too on your petition. petition you can petition cry out and say, help me, Lord. Mm -hmm. And by that cry alone, the Lord can help you. And open your eyes so you can see the accursed thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it depends. But if you petition, I want to come higher, Lord, or I want to get that material things, I, I want to come higher. I want to be a witness for you. But there's art you have against somebody. There's a curse thing. There's generational curses mm -hmm. in, 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 in your family. And it's evident. Because when you talk to people, people knows that there's somebody in the family working witchcraft and there's a connection to you. But we turn a blind eye. Mm -hmm. Mercy. Many a times. Many a times. And, you know, it's so unfortunate that, you know, such as these things are happening, um, people look at it and say, man, how can I, you know, leave my family knowing that, you know, this, this person, you know, who is of the occult is, is also helping my children to, 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 you know what I mean, to go to school or helping with grocery. It's like we put God on, a, on, on the back burner sometimes and then we allow we invest more into man and invest more into, you know what I mean, things per se, and not really grasping the concept and say, you know what, I'm going to trust you, Lord, and you have to provide for me because I am your child. You know what I mean? You know, I, I received a call today from a gentleman from a different country, and he said, I got your number, mm -hmm. and I, I need a man of God to help me to get higher. Mercy. He said, I'm blind in one eye. I received six to seven gunshots, and I'm not dead. I am blinded, but I want a man of God to lead me. I want to know God more. I want to go in the word serious. He sent me that message, and I assure him that I'm going to be talking to him. So when you know God and you have that confidence, and that's what we're going to be talking about tonight, the confidence in God. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't have the confidence in God, so we waver, and we waver, and we see things from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. But when we trust the Word, we mm -hmm. trust His promises, and we know that you're a Christian all your life. It's for a purpose. God is real. We're not going to put our trust in men. Mm -hmm. which, which is so unfortunate that, you know, a lot of, a lot of people continue to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But God is, is good and amazing. And, yo, that, that's a definitely a 
very powerful um, statement there in regards to that man picking up or uh, got so many shots, gunshots, but yet still the Lord has something mighty indeed for his life. Another viewer writes, says, uh, Brother Patrick, my son is 11 and my daughter is 10. Would like to be a part of the ministry. What are some of the first things they should know when pursuing a ministry like this? Well, the Lord calls the little one, yes. forbid them not. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the devil used little ones too. So we have to go into prayer. That's part of it. Pray and ask the Lord if that person is qualified. It has nothing to do with us. Because I have, I have, um, I remember a few years, um, there's this evangelist, Seventh-day Adventist that came from, he, he ministered in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and he went away on a crusade to mm -hmm. preach in Africa. And when he came back, he came back with some PowerPoint and showing what took place there in Africa. And I think that changed my life drastically because I saw he showed that when he was doing the crusade, he was asking, how comes I don't see a lot of children? And somebody said, there is a little boy in the neighborhood who is the highest witch, eight years old. And all the children is afraid, so they keep the children indoor. And the lady who is the mother for that child came to the pastor and says, and she, he showed the picture while he was sharing because a lot of people won't believe. So he showed the picture. Mm -hmm. And the mom says, could you come and pray for my son? And he gave her money and said, go bring a cab and take him here. They showed a picture with him walking through and it's like fire coming from his eyes. Eight yes. years old. They brought him to the front. And when he came to the front, the mother knelt down and talking to him. So the pastor, why are you kneeling down? He said, anybody talks to him mm -hmm. and don't kneel, he will kill them immediately. So therefore, what, what, so the pastor says, that can't happen here. And they prayed and prayed and the long story, he ended up giving his life. But in that part of the vineyard, a lot of young people mm -hmm. the devil uses, like up to 11 years old, six years old. The point I'm trying to make is that Everything we do, we got to take it to the Lord in prayer. Mm -hmm. And this is the seriousness of this ministry. That when you come, it's war. So therefore, if a young child want to come, we will pray with them. Because God can use them with power, mm -hmm. discerning power. So we welcome them, but we have to pray and anoint them and ask the Lord if this is his purpose and his will. Mercy. So, so the parent out there, definitely you have heard, you know, the first thing um, on the list is prayer. Really seeking the Lord because, you know, I, I recognize that this ministry is a frontline ministry. You know, you know, you have some of the soldiers who fight in the front line and you have some who fight, you know, what I mean, as, as so on and so forth. But we recognize that this ministry is a frontline ministry dealing with, you know, a lot of family issues, a lot of family crisis situation, you know, suicidal on the list. There's so much on the list. And, and these are situations that no one basically want to deal with or talk about that is affecting us. Yeah. You know, we're in the mass. The, the ministry does a, a program talking about taking off the mass. Powerful program. A lot of people have seen it thus far and, you know, we're going to continue to press. But, you know, just, just taking off the mask and honestly just being real with God. I just want to add one thing. So if a young person or whoever is interested mm -hmm. in joining the ministry, just send us an email and we'll pray and then we'll contact them and we will, you know, allow the spirit of the Lord. Never too young. If there's five years old, that's fine. The Spirit of the Lord uses young people, children. So everything is open. Mercy. Um, you're, you're one of your, um, one of your uh, 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 apprentice here says, Isabella, she says, um, she would like to know how to fight back in her dreams, even when the demon shuts up her mouth from speaking 
And it, she can't basically pray in her mind. Okay, that's, that's very powerful. That's very powerful, she Isabella. Wants to know. That's very powerful because here what happened. Um, I, we were talking about this that I work with a few people in the last few days where in their dream, that's when they initiate them. Because even the family we're working with now, out, out uh, five hours away, he had a dream also where they brought like a paper to sign and he refused to sign it in the dream. And that's form of uh, initi initiation. So um, I think that if you try hard, the Lord will allow you to pray in your mind. And when you pray in your mind, you're going to rebuke. But when you're awake right now, ask God to give you the ability to have dominion in your dream. Like for my dream, I would say 90% I'm in control of my dream. And it's not a lot of people like that. So therefore, if I'm in my dream and I see a dead relative, I'm not going to go and hug them. I will say, you are dead, and I'll rebuke. If something is coming at me, God always make a way out. I will fly. So I have control in my dream, you know. So I don't know. It's, it's very powerful, mm -hmm. but you have to pray for this also. But God always allow you to pray in the mind, even when they're on you and you can't speak. If you find you can pray in the mind, you need to ask the Lord from tonight, Isabella. Mercy. Ask the Lord to give you that discernment mm -hmm. and that power so you can have dominion in your, in your sleep, mm -hmm. in your dream. And, and I mean, there's a lot of people who go through these kind of harassments, yep. even in your dream, um, sleeping down, you know, you feel something holding you down, something on your chest, you know, they're fighting you, all these things. And as you said, you know, you, you, you're trying to shout the, in the name of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus, pleading that blood, you know what I mean? And then finally releases you, you know what I mean? And, and I, there's so much to share on the topic right. but you know what we know time is far spent and we definitely want to hear the word tonight that the lord has laid upon your heart and given unto you to give unto his people so my brother you know it was a pleasure just amen. talking with you and by god's grace amen solid praise god amen. but i want to give god praise want to give god thanks and you know for his strength for his mercy for you know his leading he continues to lead us day by day do you have any questions? Do you have any concerns that, you know, we can try to bring some light on, to shed some light on based upon experience of what the ministry have been going through and done? All you have to do is just email us. And once you email us, then we are able to get that information. We're able to connect with you as well, pray with you as well. So we ask that you will continue to support us. We love you all for, you know, for, for joining us week after week and for sharing as well week after week. So we ask that you continue to share the link. And by the grace of God, continue to stay strong, continue to stay courageous. What would it take to be free? I'm Brother Andrew from Button to Christ Ministry. Just stay strong and stay courageous in Jesus' name. Praise God. Thanks for watching this program. We hope that you were blessed. To further your support with us, please consider giving a donation at buttontochrist.com or .org. Any amount is appreciated and will be used for the continued growth of our ministry and the spreading of the gospel to the world. May God richly bless you and we'll see you next time.